Hello. So, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for this uh, session on uh, the uh, initiative that uh, we launched a couple of months ago um, with uh, the European Commission on the ideas for the digital agenda. The uh, purpose of uh, this session is to discuss some of those uh, ideas, to discuss about the initiative itself, uh, what we did and, and how can we uh, follow on uh, for the future. So uh, first to give a, a bit of uh, the history uh, on this. Uh, when we were uh, preparing um, Campus Party and uh, in Euro uh, the Euro this European edition, and uh, we were discussing with, uh, with the European Commission, uh, there was something that came up, and uh, it was one question, how could we use all this power, all this uh, brain power that gathers uh, at Campus Party and, and that gathers within the network of, of Campuseros to uh, in a way, help Europe uh, to move forward. And uh, what we then called, how could we help retyping European, Europe's source code? How, how could we contribute through technology and through this passion uh, to, to make uh, Europe a better place? And this is something that engages very well also with uh, one of our core uh, mission at, and at Campus Party and of one of the, the purpose of the Campus Eros, which is to make the world a, a better place, what we say something better through technology. So we decided to open uh, the floor and in this case to open Twitter to all the citizens of Europe and ask them for ideas for the digital agenda that uh, the European Commission is preparing and to ask them in uh, in five uh, particular subjects. So we ask everyone, uh, every campusero and everyone in Europe on ideas on aging well, on entrepreneurship, on health, on internet rights and on youth employment. And uh, we opened it from uh, May 15th to uh, the end of June. And at that time, we uh, got uh, hundreds uh, of tweets and hundreds of ideas. Um, we have made a, a recollection of all those that today we are handling to, to the European Commission, to Vice President Cross. And uh, also we have selected a few of those uh, tweets and the persons that uh, had those ideas to be here and to engage in, the, in this discussion. Um, some of the most uh, common words that we have found are students and jóvenes, that's youth in Spanish because of course we got tweets in, in every language. Uh, people, jobs, new companies, also words like cooperation, transparency, privacy, and uh, we must say that our more than 80% uh, of the participants were young people, 18 to 29, and, and of course the, most of the tweets, many of the tweets, reflect uh, one of the big uh, worries, uh, which is uh, youth employment and how can we foster uh, innovation and, and uh, entrepreneurship in Europe. And also how can we foster the exchange uh, of, uh, of ideas and, and of projects uh, within Europe. So with that, uh, I will give the floor to uh, the four campuseros that contributed with, uh, with some ideas, four of the ideas that we have selected. Uh, the first one, Jonathan Lavigne, he's coming from Germany, and uh, he contributed with a tweet on the entrepreneurship area. He's uh, 32 years old, born in uh, France, and uh, he has, uh, and this is something uh, good thing and, and common thing, uh, he's participated of the Erasmus program, so he truly knows uh, what uh, exchanging um, culture means. Uh, he is now in Berlin, he moved here to form a startup, and uh, please.
Yeah. All right, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, so just to introduce myself briefly, I'm Jonathan. Uh, I'm part of the old people because I'm over 29. Uh, I have the chance now to live in Berlin after being born in France and spending 10 years in Sweden, uh, which started thanks actually to a European program, which is Erasmus. Uh, the, the idea I've been submitting, which is uh, not only an idea, but actually more a set of problems I would like to see solved from, from the Euro European Union is really about bridging the gap between uh, students, entrepreneurship and companies. Uh, so I've been myself on both sides. Uh, I was a student 10 years ago looking for going abroad and going to sort of develop that company culture as I was in the end of my studies and I wanted to find an interesting project to work on. And as a student all I was faced with is actually a couple of big companies which are taking students by the dozens just to have them there to make some small projects and then just letting them go. Uh, there was not really an opportunity for me uh, to find projects which really interested me, not only in the, the technologies I was working on but also the topics, the countries I was working on. Uh, now it's 10 years, be 10 years after and I'm actually on the other side and we're recruiting, we're a small startup which has the the luck to be growing but it's very difficult for us to find young talents it is uh, you can post an ad you can try to recruit people but for a startup experienced people are expensive uh, and when you're looking for young talents you don't know where to find them if you don't have the connections into the university if you don't know a lot of people it's it's very difficult and the idea really is to uh, take this sort of concept of Erasmus and all the infrastructure which is there and really bring it to help entrepreneurship. Uh, so after thinking about this idea, I realized there is a, a program, Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs actually, but it falls, uh, according to me, directly into that problem that it's made as a program that we don't know about. So I think most of the students wouldn't know about it, most of the entrepreneurs don't know about it and which is uh, handled only as a, a sort of infrastructure. So what we would like to see is for uh, a much better and alive community between students and the private sectors and the, and the startups, which is not managed by the organizations, but uh, we, we expect sort of the organizations such as the European Union to put in the tools in place, but actually let uh, the private sector let us the companies and let the students be running that infrastructure so it goes into different direction it could start with a, a proper networks to connect students companies and projects uh, it could start with local incubators for students which are subventioned from the private sector and the public sector and uh, bringing these students into into the companies so our sort of the question for me today is what, what as part of the, this digital agenda is going to help us uh, in that direction is going to help the small companies to bring young talents and help the young talents to actually discover and get a chance to bring that entrepreneurship uh, outside because not everybody is an entrepreneur from the scratch not everybody has the courage or the, the, the possibility to be an entrepreneur but a lot of people have talent and could be That's it. Um, thank you, Jonathan. So, before we we go uh, with uh, Luis, I just I want to say that uh, all of them, Jonathan, Luis, Daniel, and Carlos, they are four of the 2,000 uh, students that through this initiative came to Campus Party. Also, thanks to the support uh, of the European Commission and thanks to the support of Telefonica, we put together 41 buses from all over Europe. So uh, some of them have traveled for more than 30 hours uh, to be here. And I think enabling this, it's already uh, a big achievement. Uh, so now I want to give the, the word to Luis. He is 26 years old. He is originally from Mexico, uh, but he lives in Sevilla now, Spain. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he tweeted about health. Yep. Uh, hello, my name is Luis. Thank you for coming and thank you, Han. Um, 
first of all, I want to say thank you to all of us. You're making this uh, really great and amazing event. And as Juan says, uh, I tweet about health. I think health is one of the most hardest uh, sections to tweet about because the ideas about health usually uh, mm, they crash with a, a big wall and that wall is that the health systems around the world are not made uh, right now. They have been made, they are made and you cannot uh, introduce modifications really quick. My tweet is, and my idea is about rare diseases. Rare diseases exist all across Europe on more than 30 million uh, persons. That's uh, the estimated amount. And, uh, the personal experience uh, for me was uh, really important because uh, seven years ago, when my sister died, uh, she passed through a really hard uh, uh, disease. And that thing uh, marks you because back in Mexico, you can understand that there's no economical power to give her more um, quality of life. But here in, Sp um, here in Spain, I. I, I discovered that there were a lot of people in this, with the same cases, with different diseases, that they were not able to complete their medical um, expedient, their, their medical files, because there's not enough knowledge out there about their disease. So I decided to create a social network. This, it's called Epochrum, and the main idea I have is to bring each of those patients to an online point, a starting point, a meeting point, where we can build a great community in which uh, the professionals, the medics, psychologists, and um, family, and the patients get there to share knowledge and to get solutions. It's really hard because uh, the most of the rare illness, uh, the more the rare diseases are not on a specific place. Rare diseases, most of them are genetic. So you cannot guess where it's going to appear. So imagine that you could have a rare disease, and you will not know it until you get the first sickness, the first illness, the first symptoms. That's what it makes really hard to determine if someone have a rare disease or not. So I think uh, it's really important to get on this. We could make a really equal and best world for those patients that are really having a bad moment in their lives because uh, having a rare sickness is for it's forever most of them will die most of them will have a normal life some years but at the end they will not have a really good expectancy of life so we can make with a little effort and I'm trying to do my best because I, I don't have an idea of programming but for that, I'm here. I want to help, I want to do something. And I don't care if I don't get paid. I want to do this because there's a lot of people out there that claims that they are best because they have a PlayStation, a better home, a biggest home. But we forgot something, that, that the most basic thing that have the human being is, there, is his health. Without health, you cannot work. Without health, you're no one. You're sick and you're, you're less than the other persons out there. We have to work on that and I'm really glad to to be here and that was my idea. Um, thank you Luis. I think we like you said you want to help there's a lot of campuseros who share that uh, that thought as well and not only campuseros and through technology, we can, we can enable uh, this kind of a cooperation. And that's what we would like to uh, do through something better um, and, and through these kind of initiatives. We had tweets from 26 countries out of 27 countries of the European Union. And uh, from England, we have Daniel. He's 21 years old. He comes, uh, he's studying at Staffordshire University. Uh, digital forensics and he wants to work on a cybercrime team and uh, his, uh, probably his dream would be uh, to work uh, on a counterintelligence agency so if, if there's anyone from uh, intelligence agency here if please 
we won't say that to not to diminish his chances of uh, getting there. But thank you for being here, and please. Uh, hi. Uh, first of all, I would also like to say thank you all for coming. Uh, I'd like to start off with just a, a simple fact. Um, my, my, I was chosen, first of all, uh, for the privacy section uh, with regards to like, data protection, all that kind of thing. For example, my idea was based on terms and conditions. Uh, for example, I can, I, can give, I can tell you that I can... Sorry. Uh, most of you today will most likely have... Uh, mo sorry. Uh, most likely have signed up to sites while you're here or even just externally just outside of this event. And I can guarantee that you haven't even looked through a single section of the terms and conditions, and you have no idea what you've actually signed up to. Uh, it, could be, it could be anything. And the fact that I was just about to mention is that uh, in 2011, for a brief time, uh, the UK company GameStation actually legally owned 88% of their customer base's uh, souls. Uh, due to uh, an immortal soul clause that they decided to put in just to prove that no matter uh, what you put in the terms and conditions, people won't read it. Uh, and one of the first things that I thought would be great would be to provide a new framework uh, for Europe which would allow all of the different countries in the European Union uh, to communicate on one single base and provide uh, as much harmonization of all the various different policies and regulations on privacy and, for example, the terms and conditions, uh, just to prevent all the barriers that occur when uh, startup companies have to go through the phase of uh, creating their terms and conditions. Um, so, it, if possible, that framework uh, would allow a lot of uh, collaboration on an international level. Um, the main idea that I proposed as part of my tweet was uh, to create an application uh, or a, possibly even a plugin to be incorporated into the major browsers, which instead of you having to go through it yourself, which I think we know by this point isn't going to happen, uh, summarizes uh, in a very simple, minimalistic and non-intrusive fashion uh, all of the main key features of the terms and conditions which the user should be aware of. Uh, for example, there could be two technical uh, levels of ability for the users. Uh, the beginner, I thought, would need a more visual format. Uh, so, for example, something like a, a traffic light system. Uh, red means don't go anywhere near it, it's bad. Uh, yellow is, it's, it's worrying, but you, you could go ahead if you wish, and green is obviously fine. Uh, and for the more advanced users, uh, you could have a, a pop-up, just once again non-intrusive, uh, making sure that they're aware of all of the details that they need to know about, but in a less simplistic fashion and allowing them to go into a bit more detail. Um, one of the things I'd like to mention is uh, I recently saw uh, another speaker uh, who is the creator of the Terms of Service Didn't Read, who is a very similar idea. And his website is fantastic. It's, it shows in a very simplistic format um, all the different terms and conditions of various different sites summarized uh, in a very easy to read format uh, with a, almost a, an examination. Uh, when you're at school and you get your results back from your, uh, your exams, you'd have a grade. And he, uh, what he does is he submits the grade for each of the sites uh, to show essentially how worrying their terms and conditions are and I would like to do something very similar to that however in such a way that the user doesn't need to continually go back and forth and back and forth between the site but uh, to summarize uh, my main goal really is to educate users on the dangers of why you, sh you really need to read the terms and conditions and hopefully through educating the users they'll realize how they are being exploited in various ways and through that, maybe with collaboration with various different companies, uh, we can start getting it so that users' data and privacy is respected uh, in uh, a more ethical fashion. And that's me. Okay. Um, thanks, Daniel. I will add just a, a tiny bit to this uh, discussion about uh, terms and conditions. We probably have here at Campus Party one of the first uh, collaborative terms and, and conditions we opened before this edition uh, 
that uh, our terms and conditions to, for San Camposeros to help us uh, redefine a few things about them and now we are very proud uh, of the result and, and of being open and, and collaborative about that. So it's it's key point. Uh, and finally, Carlos um, is coming from Spain. He tweeted on youth employment. He's 27 years old, uh, has a master's on business management and marketing uh, from University of California in Berkeley. And uh, he has a degree on computer science. Hi, my name is Carlos. I'm a 27 years old Spanish engineer and entrepreneur. And I propose this idea about youth employment because in a couple of years I've realized a huge mismatch between the traditional education we are getting from universities and the real skills demanded by the jobs market right now. As an example, top in, uh, 10 in demand uh, job positions in 12, 2012 uh, didn't even exist five years ago. Moreover, there are zero unemployment rate in certain job profiles, but there is a lack of human resources to cover that demand. And this is getting even, just getting started, because the speed of the change of these skills that the jobs demand are getting even faster that university can uh, adopt to change. So here's my idea, to create an open marketplace of fields of knowledge where anyone can learn to get a job in today's labor market. We decided to call it Pills of Knowledge to break it down into the very compact and practical courses where anybody can learn in a couple of hours and get an outcome within just hours. As an example, how to create a website without programming, how to learn a new social network, or even skills, non-technical non skills. So basically, we're trying to disrupt education the same way music industry was disrupted years ago when iTunes opened and let users, they gave the power to users to just decide to buy the songs from their favorite artists instead of having to buy the, the whole album if they didn't care about the rest of the songs. We are trying to empower users to, to create their own learning menu. So I have good news, which is three friends and myself have already converted this idea into reality. And we have created the first version of this open marketplace, which is called Flock, F-L-O, QQ, operating from Spain. We are now 10 international people working from a garage. And the goal is to connect people willing to learn with people willing to teach. Any kind of expert can create a course about the skills he's good at, and we are just giving him the, the platform to publish it, even if it's online or offline, and trying to get him uh, interested the students to learn this skill. And on the other way around, the students can find the skills they are really, really looking for to get a job. And even further, if they don't find the, the skills they're looking for, you can vote for them. And if we detect there is a certain volume of demand for a certain skill, we can make sure to find the right teachers that can teach it. So we are trying to build a mechanism to match demand with offer in almost real time. This is the, the whole point of Flock. And in during six months, we have created 300 teachers have created more than 400 bits of knowledge and we started getting some successful cases, like for example, a person in, in Spain called Fermin, who is a lawyer, 25 years old, applied for a job in social media space with uh, another, uh, another 20 guys. And they asked him to prepare a short presentation. So the rest of 19 guys prepare a traditional PowerPoint presentation. This guy decided to took a pill of knowledge about a tool called Prezi, which is a great tool to create visual presentations, especially for this area. So this guy got the knowledge and decided to implement it during his job presentation and finally could stand out and, and get the job. So this is the mission of, of Block to generate employment through lifelong learning. Um, but we think this could be even bigger than just doing it in Spain. So we are here because we are devoted to make this goal. We have the capabilities and we, we're really passionate about this thing. We like to spread the word to say, hey, we are here and maybe we can make it global. Thank you. Um, thank you, Carlos. I think this is a great example also on, on how technology can uh, allow people to engage and, and exchange not only knowledge, but their human experience. And that's probably one of the most important things that the people using that, that network uh, will get uh, from, from one another. Um, now I want to give the word uh, and, and present, and, although she doesn't need presentation at Campus Party, 
to Vice President of uh, European Commission, Nelly Cross, and she's in charge for the uh, European Digital Agenda. And I want to uh, personally thank uh, you for allowing us and, and encourage us to take on this initiative, uh, for allowing every citizen in Europe to express themselves, their uh, thoughts, their concerns, their, their ideas, and uh, for allowing them to contribute uh, to the future of Europe. Thank you so much for those kind words. It should be the other way around. I should be thanking you and especially the audience for giving me a lot of food for thought and a lot of inspiration and motivation. Having said that, a couple of remarks. Number one, if I have to make just one line what is touching me during such a campus party. It is, of course, the innovation and the innovative attitude of all your talents. I have never ever been in an audience with so many talents. And uh, what I said before, um, Brussels is also a talented place, so to say, but you are beating Brussels. Having said that, Jonathan, if you are looking for good people, then here they are. So come on, leave the audience here and just go for finding your people. Um, just one other issue. Um, it is impressive how non-selfish most of you are and that it is just not only a hobby or involvement in this whole exercise, but you are proving that via eHealth it is not based on a selfish approach, it is based on uh, the knowledge that people could carry their uh, real um, worry um, and a life that's not easy in a better way with understanding what is at stake and also their surrounding. So information, but then please, professional um, is at stake and that makes a lot of sense. One other issue, um, education of the users. I couldn't ask for more, for that is at stake. Still, 25% um, of the European population have never ever visited internet. So that is quite a number. And I have just uh, promised at the beginning of this term in office that every European should be connected at the end of this term in office, I still have two years, so I badly need more education for potential users, for quite a number of those people that have never ever visited are scared, they don't think that um, there is security enough, and we should educate them that it can be trusted if we and we all are taking our responsibility talking about youth unemployment, if someone is asking me what is your biggest worry at the moment, being a member of the European Commission, then it is the youth unemployment. In certain member states, more than 55% of youth unemployment is unacceptable. It is losing a generation and it is a disaster for a community. So the more the better if we can just connect those facts that are making sense that in 2015 700,000 jobs have to be fulfilled in Europe in this sector. So now it is at stake that you are combining on one hand the supply with the demand and of course we are realistic enough that is not a natural process so you have to give a hand. Just a couple of remarks if you allow me to say so uh, in what the Commission, what Brussels is doing. We took the decision of Horizon uh, 2020 and Horizon 2020 is talking about the EU research program. Quite interesting for all of you so to say. It will provide additional instruments better tailored in support of innovation and digital entrepreneurship. So it's talking about you and it's focused on your effort, so to say. And that will facilitate 
the establishment of a more fertile, digital, entrepreneurial ecosystem in Europe. And we need to fill that in. We need to be competitive with the rest of the world. Well, the talent is available. Here we are. Uh, the numbers are impressive of so many talented people. So let's fill in that it is really done, so to say. So the final aim being to have more web ventures in Europe, to make them grow. Here we are. That's the challenge for you. And to support you to become global leaders and that is I imagine a dream of most of you so to say there will be and that's a good example especially focused on new small and medium-sized enterprises a dedicated instrument and that will help to adapt the EU funding schemes to highly innovative uh, small and medium-sized enterprises well here uh, we got all those examples of really innovative um, activities in um, startups and the way they are working as well as give them more visibility and support to grow. We did already take a couple of um, uh, targeted actions to stimulate a business oriented web culture. We prone to experimentation. We have done the promotion of role models and we are not yet there. We need more of you for that is the best and the two guys of 16 that were um, explaining what they are doing and uh, their main uh, complaint was when I was asking what could we do for you is not giving us the feeling that we are not real entrepreneurs because we are 16 and not, um, not acting like uh, the law is asking for. Well, if a 16-year-old guy or girl or even younger can do the job, then I think we have to take that possibility. But also retaining web talents, integrating the fragmented web entrepreneurial ecosystem in Europe and promoting an EU-wide platform for grassroots development and incubation. If we can do that together and if listening to this list what we are doing if you have um, thoughts if you have remarks if you think that we could better focus on name it let us know when that is also the advantage of a clear line in communication I'm um, so to say online so take your chance and take the opportunity thanks Um, if, you, if you allow me to, uh, there's one question that uh, we have been uh, getting through this process of uh, ideas for the digital agenda. And of course, when we think of moving forward with such a, uh, open and uh, participative processes, uh, the question is, uh, of course, we are now handling all these uh, ideas on, onto you. And people do ask us, uh, what, what is the process or what happens? Uh, with uh, with all those ideas <laughs> it depends on the ideas uh, anyhow um, we will read them so no doubt uh, it won't be uh, just uh, in the cupboards and uh, next uh, issue will be dealt with we will read that and we will be certainly uh, thinking over what could fit in or what could add to our policy and our strategy. That is the least I can mention to you. Um, by the way, we will communicate that and if there is still a command, for, for example, I was asking your traffic light um, project and thought, please give me a line and then we can find out uh, if it makes sense to um, implement it in our strategies too. And that will be done with um, the ideas. Thank you. Um, I want to have lunch uh, a quick question before giving the word to, to the audience for, for questions. Uh, to our four uh, young uh, tweeters, uh, and that's, I was thinking, what, what, what were your thoughts when you were uh, writing those tweets? Uh, what was your motivation? What, 
Well, in my case, which is youth, uh, youth employment, is because I'm really living this problem. I, I live this problem in myself. I'm, I consider myself young, and I see that in Spain, there is over 50% rate of unemployed people below 25 years old. So it really touched my heart, and I, that's why we are trying to build this platform to, to help people build a job. And I think this is a great opportunity to get some exposure and probably, I don't know, get some help from other people from other countries and do something bigger. Well, in my case, uh, that was a really bad day. <laughs> you know, economical news uh, on Spain. Uh, at the moment, all the, uh, everything's bad. My football team lost. And it was a really bad day. And I, through, the, through my Facebook, I had a friend that posted me, he lent me a news, actually, about a mother in Valencia that get uh, enough girl fund, no funds to studying, uh, something about diabetes tree or it was some, some sickness. And when I was reading the, the full story, it was like, this woman had a children, and the children died, but she keep on carrying on because she wanted to develop the, some investigation, and she was doing, out, doing it at her own, and I say, come on, this cannot be possible. <laughs> this is not the world I want to live. This is, uh, come on, you know, it's like a joke. People is dying, and nobody is doing anything. It's a mother on her own who wants to, who has to be to, to do that? And I say, well, I close, I close the tab, and there was another bad news in the world. And I say, well, I don't know anything about politics. I don't know anything about engineering that is not being developed, or I cannot imagine something. So I decide that this will be, this will be my, my, my case. And I decide, this is my idea. It was a, a really a, a longer, <laughs> it's not, not that quick, but uh, it took me two or three days, but that was my, my intention. I was thinking of helping you. That's just oh, what I think in that moment. Thank you. Uh, we have a, a small time if there's um, any questions uh, from the audience there. Um. Hello, uh, my name is Fadi and I want to ask uh, you a question. Uh, I would like to thank you that uh, uh, you, uh, as European Commission and as uh, people uh, in Brussels, are giving us really good lection on how to speak, how to dress, how to look nice, and how to behave in a very, very nice way. Uh, there is no doubt that you uh, putting much more focus on this side uh, than on a real work. I think. There may be people that will not agree with me, but like from my colleagues uh, who wants to go to Brussels, it's typically a person who is very smart. He wants to eat a very nice uh, food, dress uh, in a very nice way, speak a lot, meet a lot, but do nothing. Do you think that this culture that Brussels has of ineffectiveness and putting a really strong image on rhetorism and like behaving like in a really nice way, dressing in a really nice way, but doing nothing is a necessary part of our political representation or do you think uh, that it has historical um, uh, roots, like, you know, our courts was, were always like that, but uh, do you think there is a way to really change it? I think we don't have to discuss if this is a fact or not, but do you think, okay, let's put the question like this, what really can be done to make you more focused on the outcome on the real work than on this uh, part that you are focusing already. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, react. Number one, I couldn't care less how you are dressed and hopefully you couldn't care less how I am dressed. And I can assure you when it is free time I'm wearing jeans and gyms and whatever. So. Please don't make the wrong um, judgments for anyone who you are meeting about um, the person itself. Wait till there is a statement or an action or whatever. What I'm so pleased with is that this new generation, so the younger generation, is less selfish, but I'm aware that not 
all of the youngsters are less selfish. But most of them are less selfish than sometimes is um, mentioned by the older generation. We are more and more aware, and that is at stake. Half of the population of the world, so the global population, is connected with internet in, in 2016. That means that they have the information. And now you and my responsibility is at stake that talking about environment, talking about education, talking about sharing and joining is at stake. And politicians are just faced with that reality. So just make up your mind when there is an election who you are trusting. In the meantime, it's far more courage with politicians than anything else. It's not a time to spend money. It is time to prove the courage that anyhow you are taking decisions, that you can face yourself in the mirror by night, that you can face your children or grandchildren. For me, but that is a bit emotional, when I got the two granddaughters that was, and I pretend to be already aware that with a responsibility as a politician, you have to implement and you have to prove. But after my two granddaughters, it really makes sense. I will never ever accept that they are just addressing me and telling me, you were aware that there was a problem, you didn't act, and we are the victims of your behaving. That is not at stake. So please also press the older ones that you are not accepting a behaving that is not honest, that is not transparent, and that is not open. And get rid of all those who are only interested in um, the outside uh, of uh, their own behaving. It is talking about results and um, the implementation of what is at stake. And there is a lot at stake and we have never ever had such opportunities. If I could get all of you involved in what is at stake at the moment in Brussels, then I would be even more optimistic that we could tackle the problems. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, and hi, good afternoon, and I want to thank you for coming and speaking with you, both the tweeters and the vice president of the European Commission. Um, my question is relating to connecting the dots of what I heard today. Um, Luis mentioned the problem of youth unemployment, which you confirmed. Um, you mentioned the problem of 20% of the European population not having ever visited the internet. Um, I was thinking about the demographics of the European countries. We have a lot of aging people, and I'm sure that a lot of that percentage that you mentioned refers to this aging population. On the other side, uh, Luis mentioned the problems in healthcare and bringing information. So these are a lot of thoughts. Um, so getting to the point, um, we here have a stage on social media as a way to bring down barriers and for Luis um, and for Carlos, for Daniel, to spread the word about their products. However, as you said, that won't ever get to those 20% of the population that you mentioned. However, it's 20% of people of the European population that needs to be connected with them. What role does government, what role do you think government can play in providing the same service that social media is doing in order to connect um, to, to connect Luis with the healthcare professionals that you mentioned, or to connect um, Carlos with the employment agencies in Europe that need to find employment for people. Could the government play a stronger role in incentivizing governments to pay people to make a video for Flock, for example? How is it that we can connect these dots? And thank you for your comments. I imagine that it is on purpose that you took those four out of a lot of uh, Twitters. Um, rightly said by you, aging population all over the continent, not only in a couple of member states, all over the continent. That means to put it 
very blindly that you are responsible um, not only uh, next year or from then, that you have to plan that your working period will be longer than the working period uh, your father, your parents were used to. By the way, it is a pleasure to have an opportunity to be in a condition that you can still work. But having said that, so an aging population and taking into account that what we normally had in mind that it is a triangle that is just like this, it will be upside down and a lot of my generation and even younger are expecting that you are doing your utmost to give us still that decent way of living. Talking about e-health, I'm always combining it. It is e-health but also combining it with aging. You were too optimistic when you were saying 20%. It's 25%. So even more to do. And there I'm coming to the education. It is quite often the case that people are not trusting the internet and not based on facts and figures so to say so rightly mentioned by you governments and NGOs and whatever organizations have to give indeed information what's in for them by the way it's not only uh, the elderly people but if you can prove that you can be longer living in your own circumstances, in your house, in your apartment, in your uh, flat or whatever, and that it still makes sense because the technology is giving you opportunities to be safe in hands for if it is not going well, then you get the help you are wanting. But that is all talking about education slash information. So at the end of the day, when we are looking to the financial consequences of an aging population, if we are not using this opportunity, then quite a bit of the total budget of a government has to be spent on health and aging uh, services. We can't afford, so it is a blessing in disguise. We can indeed take the opportunity, giving more comfort to people, but also giving more comfort to the Minister of Finance, so to say. And what is at stake is that governments should indeed take their responsibility and give far more information. And of course, we also, governments, but also the European Commission, needs to take the regulation measures that give, talking about security and criminality, for you were touching upon earlier, that we give that a uh, line where it has to be tackled. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all. And I want to end by, of course, thank you, thanking you, the four of you, but in, uh, with you, really, the thousands of people who contributed uh, with those tweets. Uh, maybe a suggestion that, I don't know if in the digital agenda, we could include some kind of tool that would regularly allow uh, people, uh, the citizens, to contribute uh, with their thoughts for the future. But uh, of course, a big thanks, uh, and, and this is also a bit of an answer to one of the questions for being. One more question. Hi, I will not thank you for being here. I think it's uh, my democratic well, my democratic right for uh, Ms. Kurz to be here and listen to us. I think that's a big problem in the EU, that they work in a very protected environment like any power structure works and uh, there's a big disconnect between what people do and what we do and they tend to listen to um, the industry they think, representing the people, which is not the case, it's lobby organizations. And uh, my question is, how do we get this, this organization to come a little bit closer to earth? Because it's not only we that are supposed to solve problems, political people have to listen to us. Uh, I mean, for example, yeah, we take all your suggestions and we put them in a box and we will look at them. Okay, where is the transparency in this project? 
Um, how do we expand transparency? How do we um, force um, people working in political organizations to be more transparent? Uh, how do we encourage them to listen to people? Um, and what is the Commission's plan here? I mean, because Commission has a very nice culture of working in a protected environment and how... What are their plans to extend their transparency and uh, little, listen to people outside their uh, so-called uh, sphere? <clears throat> you can blame me for a lot. Um, and that is, no, you, you were very kind in starting your intervention, but still you can blame me for a lot. But one thing you can't blame me, and that is that I'm not open and transparent. Having said that, you took all my colleagues in this intervention too. The European Commission should be more open and transparent. I can assure you that anyhow my experience, and I have been active in um, the um, uh, regional politics, in the national politics, and now in the European politics, I have never ever worked in a organization that is more open and transparent. By the way, forced, forced by Parliament, forced by, so don't ask why, and, but it is, so otherwise if you don't agree, be more specific and give me examples, for otherwise I can't make an omelette out of it. You need eggs to break for making the omelette. Having said that, um, when I was mentioning on your question, what are you doing with the Twitters, that we will read them, well, you can't blame us that we are reading your stuff. Number two, that we take the issues that are making sense and that are making a lot of uh, input in our strategy, that we will not only read it, but take it into account more than that. And, by the way, you can't blame me if I haven't read them, that I'm not saying everything will be taken over. That would be a bit risky. So, um, I will let you know what is going to happen with the Twitters, and I will let you know why some are accepted and perhaps some are not. But it's too early to say that some are not accepted. And be otherwise more specific for it. Um, yeah, we, I'm afraid we don't have uh, m more time, uh, even though the, all the questions are interesting. Uh, no, I'm not cutting him down. We, we have to cut the discussion. Come to me afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So you have an open channel of our communication, and there's also the team of the vice president is open. I think, uh, I think you said something very interesting. Uh, the, the European Commission is engaging on the horizon 2020, and you said that you would be much more hopeful if you knew that, we could, that you could have uh, all this talent and passion behind that. And, and I think that's a big offer. Uh, at least in the name of Campus Party, I can say that we are ready to do that and we ask what can we do to help. I think, um, and in answer to some of the questions, the fact that you are here, it's, uh, it's the proof of that. So thank you very much. And uh, I would just like to finish with, with that and applause, please.